Hey guys, Dantix here. Anthem, the exosuit-based action looter shooter is at our doorstep, with the VIP demo arriving on the 25th of Jan and the public demo hitting Feb the 1st. So time to blast you with some new and interesting information that's dropped around the internet thanks to IGN sources below. Today we'll be talking clans, or as Anthem calls them, alliances. We'll be talking the hub world, weekly and monthly missions, dailies, crafting, running through all the weapons, including timed grenade launches, and more. Before we start, I'm running a competition to give away a digital copy of Anthem. Follow the link below. So, I've been asked a lot of questions about crafting in Anthem, and I'm hoping I can answer them all now. First, how do you craft? Well, you find materials out in the world of Anthem or break down items. Crafting materials like this Crimeric Alloy. I hope I said that right. First though, you'll need to undertake a mission from Prospero. Finishing that will unlock the ability to craft not only components, but weapons, items that grant new abilities, and personalization parts to make your javelin look really cool. You'll find blueprints out in the world and you can craft an item of that blueprint up to the level your pilot currently is. The blueprints don't have their own associated level. So if you have a common assault rifle blueprint and craft at level 20, you'll get a common level 20 assault rifle. This means that blueprints will always be useful no matter the level you find them at. The developers have said crafting is a way to supplement your build. Say you found a masterwork or legendary item with a powerful property focused around hovering. You might want to craft until you get items that provide extended hover time. The fact that you can buy and craft personalization parts mean there will be a way to earn swag for your javelins without spending real money. We all know there's a legion of people just waiting for EA to overextend with microtransactions, and my YouTube spam filter catches hundreds of them a day, meaning they just click on every EA video they see, copy and paste the same comment, and expect to go from there. So I wouldn't be surprised if Bioware make this an extremely fair system that rewards playing the game. Just to reiterate though, there are no loot boxes and there is no pay to win. You have the option to pay for specific cosmetic items, but you can see what they are and their price before you spend money. Now moving on, what I really want to talk about is clans, guilds, alliances, whatever you want to call them, they will be an anthem. But they're officially called alliances and they're a way to ensure when you log in and when you want to play together, you have a list of your real life friends or the friends you've made in game or over the internet. We're unsure if you can create specific alliance names or if this system will simply group like-minded people together, but what is known is you'll receive rewards for playing with those in your alliance. So it's further rewarding for being social. So if you want to join an alliance of cool like-minded people, check out my Discord in the description below. I'll be organizing alliances across all platforms closer to the launch day, and you can chat to me and others about Anthem, 9,000 members and counting so far. So alliances seemingly have tiers, higher tiers most likely unlock extra features, maybe alliance banners or emblems, or maybe just better loot. You can see how much you've contributed to the alliance, and I'm sure there'll be bragging rights. I'll update you with more information as it comes, but this is a huge feature for such a social game and will most definitely improve the longevity. Also, grouping with complete strangers every time isn't that fun. Speaking of rewards, it's confirmed there will be daily, weekly, and monthly quests you can undertake for rewards. They call it Trials of Tarsus. This will reward you for logging in regularly and doing specific things like killing enough scars, Dominion, Outlaws, or completing world events. I personally love the addition of these quests as every game they're in encourages me to go out with a goal. The dopamine squirts out of my hypothalamus all over my brain and makes what was generally a mundane task of logging into a daily title have purpose. It also means that if you have a busy life, you won't feel punished logging in every so often, completing the quests you have, then going about your meaningless soul-destroying job. You may have noticed that the crafting the Alliance system and the Trials of Tarsus are within Fort Tarsus, your hub area. So you can not only do those things, you can mess around with your javelins, talk to NPCs, build interpersonal relationships, take missions and find lore all within that area. You can find Cortexes hidden around the fort like you can do in the open world. That will give you nuggets of information about the universe. This one explains how the Interceptor came to be. And I'm kind of interested in the lore on the Storm Javelin specifically and how they explain space magic using science. So when you get back to the hub from a mission, after you're done checking out all the sweet loot you collected, you can check out the map. 
Here you can see the NPCs wanting to have a good old chat with you, no doubt gracing you with the privilege of risking your life for them. What's a cool feature though, is that the fort will evolve the further you get into the storyline. You see this cluttered corridor section? Well, after a few missions, it clears up, revealing more NPCs to interact with, but it also reveals a minor flooding issue. My assumption is this getting fixed will result in you being able to interact with another area in the fort. While you're in the fort, you can browse all the weapons you have, the components, the gear, the consumables, and you can craft and junk items. We haven't seen much on consumables yet, but it's led me to believe there will be Mass Effect-like temporary one mission only buffs you can apply before you start. It might be something like an increase in a specific damage type or better shields, but that little boost will really help in higher difficulties. I imagine the Anthem will be the same as Mass Effect in that way. That the little push will help those under geared into harder content more than it is to push those incredibly geared up a bit further. Now looking at weapons, we can see here that there are 300 slots. Yes, you can have 300 items. That includes weapons, components, and gear. Right now we see 11 being used. 300 though is a hell of a lot, and considering that you can dismantle items for their components, I don't foresee you having this filled up as weapons and components can mostly be used across all javelins, and we don't know if there's a way to increase the amount of slots you can have with levels. So in this menu we see all the weapon types. Within these categories are subcategories though of those weapons. So for example, sniper rifles come in a few flavors. Some have your standard big powerful long range shot, others have a charged explosive round. First are the heavy pistols. Why you ask, would anyone use a pistol in an armored exosuit that has missiles, lightning bolts, and lasers? Well, these are basically hand cannons. Think of the pistol from Halo 1 or the hand cannon from Mass Effect 3. They fire slow, have low ammo, but are accurate and hit very hard, especially on headshots or weak point shots. The different types seemingly have different rates of fire, and the heavy pistols can be equipped by all javelins except the Colossus. You see, thick boy hands aren't delicate enough to hold such a dainty weapon. Next are the shotguns. Do I even need to explain this weapon? Ever since Doom, the shotgun has been a staple, a favorite of gun nuts everywhere. If you plan on getting up close, the shotgun is your weapon. The different types focus around rate of fire and burst modes, and well, all javelins can use them. Assault rifles are your bread and butter medium range option. Well, medium and everything really, even rate of fire, damage, range, and ammo. The different types of assault rifles seem to differ in damage and rates of fire. All javelins can equip assault rifles. Next is marksman rifles, which is what you'd get if a sniper rifle and an assault rifle had an unholy child, and it functions kind of like what you'd expect, higher power and range, but lower rate of fire and ammo. The difference between the types we know of seem to be around rate of fire and burst modes. It can be equipped by all javelins. Next is the machine pistol. This is your Uzi, your rapid fire close range option. Think Mass Effect 2 and 3 Vanguard with the machine pistol. That's how it works, getting close, spray, prey, and your enemies pay. Originally, this was seemingly restricted to the Storm, Ranger, and Interceptor, but the Colossus can, in fact, use them, so it's a win for that hunk of metal. The pistols seem to focus around different rates of fire, power, and accuracy. Next is the light machine gun. This is the assault rifle and the machine pistol if they had a hyperactive ADHD devil spawn. Well, the assault rifle is really getting around. Well, look, you've got to try these out to truly understand the difference, but it has a high rate of fire and lower damage and accuracy per round. The different types seem to revolve around the damage and rate of fire. The light machine guns can be equipped by all javelins. So next is the sniper rifles, and they have the longest range out of any weapon in the game, which you'd expect. Sit back, zoom in, and look down the scope, and pop some Scar's heads off. There's the normal sniper you know and love, hitting hard, long range, low rate of fire, but there's also one you can charge to send out an explosive area of effect shot. And there's also ones that have slept with the assault rifle as well, and have a high rate of fire. Snipers can be used by all javelins. Next is the first heavy weapon, the auto cannon. The auto cannon is basically a minigun with the rate of fire increasing the longer you fire up to a point. It is potentially the fastest firing gun in the game with a huge amount of ammo. It doesn't hit the hardest, but it won't matter when your enemies are Swiss cheese. The different kinds focus around increasing the accuracy the longer you fire, 
even higher rates of fire and higher damages. The auto cannon can only be held by the Thick Boy Colossus, and it's pretty much the size of a human being. The last weapon type is the Grenade Launcher, and we all know what that weapon is about, lobbing explosive projectiles at your enemies. It has low ammo, so you won't be able to spam it, but does high area of effect damage. The different types include a sticky grenade version, one that functions similar to a rocket launcher, and a traditional bouncy grenade type. The Colossus, once again, is the only javelin that can equip this weapon. So those are the weapons we know exist, but there'll be plenty more surprises to come, I'm sure, especially when they're modified by masterwork and legendary abilities. So thanks for watching guys, hopefully this has provided a nice jolt of information to sustain you through, but if you need a bigger hit, be sure to like the video and comment what you'd like to see next, what questions you have, or what you enjoyed, and I'll try to get to them. Also subscribe and hit that bell button for much, much more Anthem content, it really helps a lot, but if you want to go the extra mile, I just started a Patreon page. I plan to make in-depth coverage, stream, Twitch link below, make tutorials and play with you guys, so buckle up. Thanks, and see you soon.